Well, like you made marker. it. You made it back. <laughs> back. We have uh, been out a while, almost like a month. Yeah, nothing like record the first few episodes only to take a month break. Hey, you know what? You got season. Li- leave them on pins and needles. <laughs> um, no, how was your uh, break? Good. It was good. Got back to Illinois. Visited some friends and family. Everything went well. The only thing that sucked is just that drive. It's awful. It's not a good drive. It's not fun. Did you go through Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Atlanta wasn't bad. Nashville, Nashville wasn't bad. Kentucky was awful. Mm. It's a lot of construction going on and bridge work. Slowed me down quite a bit. But uh, other than that, it's probably my only slowdown was when I was heading north, heading south. Surprisingly, it was fine. Nice. Got lucky. Yeah, we uh, flew this time, and it was so much better. That's a smart choice. So much better. <laughs> Saves you 16 hours. Yeah. It was uh, uneventful, but, hey. Um, the other things that, while you were gone, um, we did some trade shows. Mm-hmm. And so we had the Orlando trade show, um, and that one is typically one of the biggest IRS shows of yeah. the year. We also did a couple of things at the trade show where we had a, a customer event. We did at Top Golf there. Um, it's right by the hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool event, even though it's like really hot at this time. Um, Top Golf is always fun. Did you embarrass yourself at it? I really didn't play that much. The A lot of customers and... Um, sponsors were in the bays playing the whole time really um i took a couple hacks at it i let him know <laughs> that i'm mid as my son would say yeah the I don't uh know if you're up to that level uh, okay so that's, that's okay continue <laughs> but yeah no the the event was great we uh gave out prizes and uh sponsors were great um and then the customers um had a good time i think everyone we fed them and it was it was a good time good deal we also had a VIP party on this, was it the second night where we rented out a restaurant? Mm. Um, it was a Mexican restaurant, so we had tons of great food. It was a, a lot of food. I missed that. I couldn't even, as much as I like to eat, I couldn't put it all away. So It's a lot of food then. I was disappointed in myself. Should be. But that event was, was great. We invited people from the show um, to go there. We handed out uh, tickets and... Mm-hmm. People showed up. It was a good time. Good deal. We were the talk of the show, I believe. That's what I like to hear. I missed out on that, but it's all right. Yeah. Maybe next time. Maybe. I'll get you a ticket. I'd like that. All right. <laughs> um, I also went to Baltimore, the IRS trade show in Baltimore. Um, never been. Have yeah. you ever been to Baltimore? I have not. Good time? Yeah. Um, I've heard... Uh, quite a few different things about Baltimore. You can get in some bad areas, but I think that's in every city that you yeah. go to. Um, Baltimore, we were right in the middle of the city, so right downtown in the harbor where there's, like, tons of restaurants on the harbor. Um, like, there's boat docks where yachts are, are, and I believe, like, there's a bunch of fishing that go on. Um, so the food was good. I had probably the largest crab cake I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, I couldn't even eat it all. There was w- it was way too much crab. But um, that was fun. We uh, the show was great. Uh, a lot of traffic, which was surprising because the way they had it set up was it was like kind of like you were in the basement of this convention center, but it wasn't the basement. It was like the main floor, mm. but everything else was above it, and you had to come down the escalators and go around the corner. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised of how much traffic actually came into the exhibit hall for um, all the vendors and it was it was a good show Uh, we also went to Camden Yards um, and watched the Orioles play they played uh, the Nationals so it was kind of like a rivalry game Um, and that was great the Camden Yards is great yeah yeah it kind of reminded me of I don't know it's like a there's a lot of history that goes with that, um, but like Babe Ruth, they have like a museum down there of Babe Ruth. Inside the park? No, it's outside the park, but there's a big statue of Babe Ruth out in the back. Um, but where the hotel was, um, the Hilton, <clears throat> excuse me, 
um, <clears throat> you can see like right through where the gym is. Um, like when you're in the gym, you can see through center field. Oh, wow. Kind of like in St. Louis where you're in those hotels. Yeah, yeah. Um, where, so you can see right through there. So our hotel was literally a block away from the stadium. Nice. Yeah. Um, but we had good seats. It was great. There was, so in the outfield there is pretty cool where people hit home runs. And if it goes out of the stadium, there's a warehouse and a street right behind, uh, right field. Um, you can, and so when you get into the stadium, that's where you walk through. People just hanging out there. Well, there's, the game. they've marked all the balls of home runs oh. and they put people's names on them. And um, there's actually one ball that hit the warehouse. So it went out of the stadium and hit the warehouse in the air. Huh. Guess, can you guess who that was? Nope. <laughs> well, in, in my eyes, best baseball player of all time, Ken Griffey Jr. I don't know if I'd go that far, but all right. But, but so I have the, the video. Can you pull that video up? This is... Yeah, go ahead and just hit play. So this is an all-star game home run contest. Let's do boom. So it went out of that stadium and just hit that big brick building. And so there's a marker. I have a picture. I took a picture of it. <laughs> um, I think uh, they they start like, and he's like, oh, I'd. Yeah. It happened during a, a home run derby. Not even a live game. Hey, that but. can't even really count. That's a deep shot. Look at that. Yeah. There's been a lot of deep shots in a home run derby. <laughs> but none, none of that deep because that's the only <laughs> ball in that warehouse. We're good. You can you can pause that. Um, but no, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, and currently, right now, we are in the Dallas trade show. That's still going on. Yes. So currently, Dallas is going on. And what I heard from the team was this one's actually, I think it might be bigger than Orlando. Oh really? Yeah. So they're um, they're in it right now, um, and I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll get a report back on the next episode about that one. We also have San Diego coming up on September 10th. That one's a, I'm not going to that one. Sad face. And, uh, yeah, that, I, I think that's another good show to go to. There's a giant event out there that um, everyone likes to go to as well, so, and it's San Diego. Why would you not want to go? Right. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of what has went on since we've been on pause. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of trade shows, um, and a lot of PTO. Yeah. <laughs> was San Diego the last one? <clears throat> or there's the last, last of the IRS one? It's ones. the last of the IRS. We have another one in Vegas um, for the NATP. Mm. So that one, and then we have a Nokozi event. It's like a service bureau event. Gotcha. I think those are the only ones that were um, that will end the trade show, quote-unquote, season. But, yeah, so... Um, moving on, let's talk about this ERC yeah. uh, article published by Accounting Today. Um, the headline is IRS reopens voluntary disclosure to fix one billion in ERC claims. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, the ERC was created uh, basically during the pandemic as a non-refundable credit uh, for. I mean, essentially, uh, employers that remained open during the pandemic and retained their employees. So, open up this avenue for this non -re or fully refundable credit and having no payback for it. So, obviously, with this type of credit, you're going to open the door to fraudsters. Uh, I mean, uh, fraudsters going to fraud. And so, no surprise surprise that there was a a lot of incorrect claims, especially given the fact that uh, there was a lot of oh. I mean, I guess promoters or businesses created around filing these claims for other employers and uh, to receive this credit. Um, so they were heavily pushing. So a lot of people that might have filed this or uh, listened to these people that were suggesting to them they should file and that they would file it for them and do this and that. Uh, obviously, not surprisingly, that uh, a lot were filed incorrectly mm -hmm. just for the people who were doing that to get the money off of the employer for filing the claim for them that a lot of them were filed incorrectly. Yeah. I, one of the things I thought was interesting, um, but can you go to the second tab there we have? Um, yeah, that one scroll down just a 10. Uh, yeah. So during, this is when they, uh, 
the IRS started digging into these claims. It says, mm. during the process, the IRS found that between 10% and 20% of the claims fell into what they determined to be the highest risk group, indicating clear signs of being erroneous claims for the pandemic era credit. Uh, tens of thousands of these will be denied in the weeks ahead. And I think this was published back in June. So, mm. But yeah, there's just a tremendous amount of fraud you know, from this, the article that, um, uh, that we're touching on right now, mm -hmm. it looks like the IRS is actually giving some of these businesses a chance to at least they're like withholding the penalty. Yeah. So, I mean, they're giving them a chance to either a support their claim, especially of these 30,000 letters they sent out. There's obviously a lot more than that that probably should be sent out, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, so they're sending these out. And, and through this voluntary disclosure program, it looks to be that they can, A, avoid penalties, and B, only have to pay back 85% of it. So they still net ahead in the end. So it's, a, you know, probably if you're in the group of this that receives a letter uh, that you're not really sure of, maybe somebody else filed it for you and not your normal accountant, or you don't have a normal accountant you can talk to about it, you can go through this program and... At least save a little bit. Save a little bit here and uh, pay back a little bit of less. So you're still kind of net ahead in the end. Mm -hmm. But obviously, of these letters that they're sending out, there's going to be some in there that are, you know, uh, true claims sure. that deserve the credit. So, um, and this is slowing up. Even in there, it says you know they got a lot of these erroneous claims, and inside those erroneous claims are good claims. So they're still trying to filter through all those between high risk and low ri risk uh, claims and send out payments. So it seems to be a pretty slow process right now in getting these out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the interesting things at the very end of the article, it says um, the second VDP is open for tax periods in 2021. Employers cannot use the second program to disclose and repay ERC money from tax periods in 2020. So these are only for the tax period in 2021. 2021, I, I believe, through up till uh, you have till November 22nd to make these claims. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as far as if I'm someone that if, if I'm a business owner and I've claimed the ER, these ER, this ERC, mm -hmm. are you immediately questioning yourself on these? I mean, I so might, if you're like got a great relationship with your tax preparer yeah. or your accountant, um, and the you might not do that. But if I mean, you're just like, if you got a new guy, I'm questioning it. Yeah. The so and then if you're a, a tax preparer, or a business owner, it, it's a good time to. I don't know, help your customers, put customers <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you have some serious questions about whether it was legitimate or not, maybe this is something that should be a program you explore or seek out a trusted advisor or mm -hmm. some sources that could uh, go over this for you. Um, but also, you know, there's going to be the people that already received the money and they're just going to roll the dice and see what happens. That's why it's so important to, you know, be careful on who you choose to prepare your tax return. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just going out there trying to make a dollar – off of you know this guy's the cheapest in town and or, or whatever mm -hmm. this is where you might where you might find um yourself so yeah it's super important to have some kind of trusted yeah. source and i had buddies that had some businesses and stuff and they received multiple multiple emails from people trying to contact them about filing claims for them oh so my, yeah i'm sure they're scams they pushing everywhere. hard and who knows obviously a lot of people wanted to do that to them it sounded it's free money mm -hmm. but uh, whether or not they qualified for it, they were unsure of, and they put their trust in probably a sketchy company and instead of asking a tax advisor of sources. Yeah, I also think it's it's good on the IRS. Is, you know, they don't have to do this, I, I would assume. But I'm right. sure there's a huge mess on, on their side. Well, they're like, hey, help us clean this up a little bit. That's probably a, a good point as to why they're doing this. They're so backlogged on this. If they can get some of the maybe these questionable claims out of the way uh, by people voluntarily coming in and doing this process. Uh, it might help speed them up or 
get some of the billions of dollars back that they've already pushed out there that shouldn't have been sent out. There. Right. I mean, sometimes I just wish people would just be so transparent. Just come out and be like, look, there's a lot of stuff going on. Here's what we're going to do for you. You help us out. We'll help you out. Yeah. That's that's what I'm reading into this is, you know. I think that's their hope, but a lot of people, uh, unless they're, especially some of the ones that are on the smaller ERC claim levels of the actual dollar amount they got back, they might not be so uh, yeah, and who and come again, forward. But who else is going to rat themselves out? A few people, but, you know, and I was reading there, they've had uh, already, I believe, 460 um, trials of this and with like 17 convicted of felony charges. So mm. there is the potential if you gravely committed fraud mm-hmm. here to spend some jail time. Uh, yeah. So that, those are going to be the ones that obviously you're going to, they're going to have to do some work on. Yeah. But there are going to be some people that, you know, truthfully just, you know, misreported it mm-hmm. and unfortunately going to owe some money. It's always possible. But, yeah, like I said, probably the people that got a small amount of money, they're just going to roll the dice and see what happens. Yeah. Probably not too concerned with it. But it's, it's an interesting program. Uh, see if any articles come back on how many actually take them up and how much money they recover or throughout the process of them digging through all these, how many convictions they start making. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there's many out there. Yep. I'm sure we'll see. Um, moving on to our next topic, your favorite, my favorite, Zapier. Zapier. Um, I know, I think the last time we talked about doing a contest, probably not going to do that on this episode. Um, but I did want to go over, uh, kind of the process of how it would work in the tax program. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've kind of built out, this is actually a a Zapier, so... People watching the podcast aren't going to get the the uh, the viewpoint of what we're seeing here, but I'll try to talk my way through it the best I can. So, <clears throat> the one I've built. So, uh, for those who don't know who's, what Zapier is, it's just a platform that you can use to connect different applications to and run based off triggers. You can run actions, um, and so what we're looking into doing um, is building uh, a process that you can connect. <coughs> the Crosslinks tax software Mm -hmm. to Zapier and run actions off of. And this one I've built out basically is going to work off of the statuses of returns. Right. So what we can do is based off the status of a tax return, um, on this example, I've told it to update a Google sheet that I have stored. um, And it pulls in the information from the tax return with the status, and then when the status changes, it triggers different paths. Right. All right, so if we can scroll down just a tad, you can see here's the the statuses. So return uh, filed, acknowledged, rejected. And the one I built it off of was acknowledged. So theoretically, when the tax return gets acknowledged, I can now um, update it. Now, this is all automatic. There's nothing that... Correct. the tax professional, the business has to do. So if you scroll down just a a tad, you can see I built another path. So based off of when the tax return gets acknowledged, it updates the Google sheet, which then scroll down a little bit here, gets me to these two paths. So once the Google sheet is updated, I'm now going to trigger two different paths, an internal communication and a client communication. Mm -hmm. And so um, just a little bit more. There we go. So now my internal communication is going to trigger the, uh, scroll down just a tad, Slack message. So let's say I have a a tax business with three employees, me, my receptionist, and a preparer. Mm -hmm. So now uh, my uh, preparer has submitted um, the tax return, and it's got acknowledged. Now the communication is being brought down and I'm sending a Slack message to my receptionist to create a task, to reach out um, 
and do what she needs to do as far as our workflow in our office. Right. Um, so that's automatic. I'm also um, updating my CRM, Salesforce. In this case, it could be any CRM. Um, they mm-hmm. have multiple CRMs that you can update. I'm updating the Salesforce uh, CRM data inside there as well, saying return finished or, you know, whatever we want to update right. in, into that program. I'm also sending a email to the customer with a template that I've built out in Zapier that um, says, hey, you know, whatever kind of communication I want to send to that customer um, to their email and saying, hey, your return's been acknowledged. Yep. Here's the next steps or whatever we want to do at that point. But this is like, you can do so much with this. You can build as many pass actions as you want, and it, the, it can all be based off of just one simple trigger, just like in this case. Return accepted or return rejected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thoughts on that? I mean, time to wrap my tiny brain around it. There's a lot of different processes and it looks if functions you, that you can do with it, and it's mm-hmm. pretty interesting how just off of one trigger, how it can uh, – snowball and all of these little effects and what it looks like a lot on here mm-hmm. it's not it i'm literally just well yeah clicking you 10 build buttons. it out it doesn't sound too complicated because it all seems when i was watching the one video to be based off of when or do functions you know when this mm-hmm. happens do this when Correct. do and uh the fact that it can happen all simultaneously after an event occurs and you've built out these pathways like this and it could be reported to all this instead of having to manually update or check this all the time mm-hmm. and keep going in and out of the, the software to see has it been rejected, has it been accepted. You know, all these events occur once the acceptance or rejection happens. I mean, it makes it a lot easier on a business or uh, on the preparer or the person who's running the office. And especially when you have multiple offices Mm -hmm. where you're running more than just a three person operation that could uh, really streamline events that uh, create less work for each individual to have to do or focus on and leaves them open for other things. Exactly. I mean, you're going to save time, effort, money, Mm -hmm. you know, building automations on your, uh, on the back end of your tax program is going to be a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, You know, you can connect to all these sorts of applications as far as, you know, you can do any of the counting uh, books like QuickBooks or Zero. Yeah, and this would be nice, too, especially once, like, on the payment receipts and tie that into your QuickBooks or any accounting software you have to be able to track instantaneously almost the way I kind of figure it would be, you know, the income for that period or to not have to go back into the return and check whether or not you got paid and confirm it. It's already going to be done. Yeah, I mean... It's if I'm if I'm uh, a business owner, I'm definitely using this. Yeah, and I'm probably going to hire someone to set this stuff up for me, instead of you know hiring someone to do some task that's in here. Mm-hmm. Then just hire some you know younger person, and it doesn't even need to be a younger person. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult it's to really set not. up. I was watching some of the the videos for it, and then. Uh, it kind of lays it out step by step how to do this or that. And obviously you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's a great thing. I mean, this is just one example. Um, and one, yeah. of Just one part of it. Yeah. And I, and we'll continue to talk about uh, this on, uh, pods in the future, but I, I know I wanted to build this out and show it, um, just to get our users, you know, uh, used to hearing about it because Hopefully, this is something that um, we are definitely looking at for um, next year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's It'll be it's a great tool to use. It's great. Whether it is for even just a single person office, it takes sure. a lot of different work that you don't have to do anymore, especially for the email purposes. If you just want to get emails out based off acceptances or uh, other events you want to create for it to do. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's it's a time very saver. Useful. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't really think that we have much on this episode. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on? No, sir. Any golf in the future? Oh, I'm sure there will be. We need to get back out there. It's yes. starting, I it can sense cools off. it cooling off a little bit. Yeah. Once it finally cools off and we stop getting these rainy days all the time, it'll be uh, 
you just ride. Yeah, we'll have to pick a course that neither one of us been in and um, set a date. We'll go. Oh yeah, and I'll uh, I'll be there. Put myself on 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 the show again, showroom floor. Mm-hmm. Losing. All my glory out there. It's a sight to <laughs> in, see in the in the jungle, <laughs> <laughs> looking for gators, we'll venomous snakes. I have to get you some boots and a machete just for finding your balls. Yeah, that should uh, definitely be in my golf bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, All thanks right. for jumping on again, and um, uh, we should be back next week. You good? Yes, sir. All right. All right. See you. See you.